been on this line. Got sick of it. <laughs> All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Tuesday, July 17th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the clerk help me with the roll call? Uh, Chairman Harley. I'm here. Vice Chairman Margiotta. Here. Uh, I'm here, Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Eichel. Here. Mr. Hammer, no. Mr. Homicki, no. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Nope. Mr. Silver. Here. Okay. All right. So there's nine of us and everybody can participate. First item is a 3.1, a public hearing for application number 1985-18-Z. Greg, I'm going to brutalize that name. Thank you. Uh, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.5 uh, to park an oversized RV in front of 14 Yale Street. If you would join us at the at the front, <clears throat> I'll explain this. Uh, we're gonna ask the applicant to uh, describe what it is that he is proposing to do. And uh, the commission will ask him some questions and when we feel like we've, uh, let me just say, at, at some point or other we're gonna turn it over to the public and let them ask some questions. And then the commission will take it back again and when we feel we have enough answers to our questions we could close the hearing and move on to a uh, on to a decision this evening all right so that's how it works if you could just uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you're doing my name is greg kanashevic i live at 14 yale street uh so i'm here today because i have a travel trailer for camping it's uh approximately 19 feet foot in length it's called the 175 which is 17.5 feet a few extra feet with the trailer uh i keep it on the side of my garage it doesn't stick out in any particular way. I've had this since 2015. I wasn't aware of the uh, the ordinance. Uh, I camp anywhere from 10 to 15 times a year, so it's not like it's a permanent fixture. Uh, very mobile, small truck, you can pull it. Uh, I live with my wife and two kids, so it's, it's big enough for that. Uh, Pretty particular about my yard, so I wouldn't want an eyesore either. Uh, neighbors have never had any issues with it. I uh, live next door to my brother-in-law, sister-in-law. Uh, really, they're the ones that have like clear sight of it, so I don't think it's any kind of a, like a public eyesore or anything like that. Are they the residences to the right when you're looking at the house? Correct. Yeah, if you're on, standing on the road, they're to the right of me. Okay. Usually, there's a car parked in front of you; you can barely see it from the road. Um, is there? A can it be moved further back behind in the backyard where it's quote unquote not in especially uh, retaining wall that kind of goes along the back of my garage I it goes as far back it's just enough room for me to put my trash cans behind it uh, again I'm pretty particular it's just, I try to keep it square to the house uh, enough just enough room so I can wheel my trash cans out to the front yard on trash day uh, there's I have a patio that goes across the whole back length of my house so there's not really a place in the backyard for me to put it without you know tearing up my yard when I was going to I would go to move it other questions rich is it, it seems like it's more in the side yard than the front yard correct I would I would okay. describe it as more as a side yard yeah I mean that I, I went by the other thing too that I think and you talk you sort of alluded to it with the retaining wall is the your backyard is like five or six feet lower than the front of the yard. Correct. So, you know, it would be down in a, down in a hole. Um, Essentially, yeah. Does it get wet down there at all? Where the camper is now or behind there? Behind, down in the backyard. Well, the yard's designed so the, the water runs off toward the back of the yard. So, yeah. in theory, it could be put there. But, again, when I went to go move the camper, I would end up tearing up my yard. Yeah. Do you keep it there year-round or just during the camping Yes, months? year-round. Okay. So I got others. Okay. Is there anybody here from the public who wishes to uh, offer comment on the proposal? Hey, Tom. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Hang around. Don't go too far. Sure. We'll we'll talk to you again. Come on up. Hi, Kathy Matto, 9 Yale Street. I'm the first house in on the corner, um, directly across from the Kanashevitz. 
And I have to say that I was appalled when I even heard about this situation because I take Ridge Road to work every day and I go past a house that has a dumpster in front of it for the past seven years. Seven years there's a dumpster and I'm looking at a house that's well maintained that just put a $100,000 addition on it that I consider to be an asset to the community. I have, I mean, I also maintain my property. But to think that somebody's being penalized for, having, for upgrading their home, for having a family camping vehicle that's not, trust me, I've driven around the neighborhood, there are campers on the side of people's homes that should be condemned. I, I'm sorry, but I just think this is a waste of everyone's time. I, it really isn't an eyesore at all. And it's not in front of the house. It's on the side of the house. I did take pictures, unfortunately, I didn't bring them with me of the view from my home to the Kanashevitz. It's on the side. It doesn't, it's not an eyesore. So, my pleasure. Thank you. I'll do a little defending of the rules in, in a bit, but is there anybody else? <laughs> anybody else? Um, the, rules, the rules are never in place for the best. Uh, we'll keep it at that. Um, George? Yeah. Um, this is a difficult one, but th we have rules that you're not supposed to be in the side yard and front yard, of course. But, um, uh, let's see. Here. You you have not, you, you never paved this, right? The, the driveway? Uh, why? Because uh, you thought it was temporary? Maybe? No, just uh, there's something added on. It was just a matter of expense, really. I just thought I did land it eventually. Okay. I just did a ton of work on putting fish on the house. Uh, something I'd like to do soon. But yeah, I ran that you, You're around. thinking of putting an addition on that side, you're saying? Did you no, just... no, I, uh, two years ago, I put an addition off the back oh, of my on house. On the back, yeah. Put a nice patio along the back okay. of my house. And the wall behind it, holding up that area, is a nicely paved, uh, structured wall. Oh, it's, it's designed to hold the driveway. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, driveway, you, yeah. some people just put in anything to hold up a wall, but you've yeah. you've uh, done a good job on that. Um, is there a reason you didn't do any planting along that side with your next door neighbor? Some shrubs. You did, he put some in, right? Or no, I put first. Uh, you put the, those are yours. Yeah. Okay. So you are then, if they grow eventually, they yeah. should help shroud it from that neighbor's side. Yeah. Okay. I, I own the house next door to me, on the right. Yeah. Uh, right now it's my brother and sister-in-law. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought you said uh, before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I would ever rent it out and someone didn't want it, wanted the privacy, the, tr the truck would be there. So. Yeah. But that was my only reason for that. But in other words, you, you're, not, you're not planning on making us a permanent type place. You just talked about possibly renting, but you're not. No, no, I'm saying the house next door. The house next door. House oh, door, okay. Yes. You mean another yes. tenant yes. other than yeah. relevant. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. I think that's it for me right now. Okay. So uh, that was a nuance. You actually own the house next door that your family members are living yes. in. And, and obviously that's what we kind of look at is what are the neighbors all, all thinking of this. Now, Let's, let's assume for a moment that uh, the, the members on the commission could find their way clear to saying, okay. Um, one, of the, one of the drawbacks with this stuff is that it runs with the land, that's what we say. But basically it means that when, you give, when you're given the approval, anybody you sell the house to can plop something on the side of the house and you might not like it next time. Um, okay, so... so um, what we'll be talking about probably are terms, so that this thing only goes for so long, kind of thing, you know. And um, you know what? Is there something I can do to make it permanent? Is there, like, I'm, if this doesn't work out, is there a solution? I mean, is there? Um, how, how does how does someone go about owning something like this? By putting it in their backyard, or by or by storing it someplace off-site, and then you know we've we've seen our way clear to. Um, 
to approve it to be in the driveway during the summer months when you're loading it and then taking off that kind of stuff but for six months of the year when you're not using it you've got it off site but but that's not where i was heading it yeah. was it was how do we put terms on it like five years right okay. so if you move in five years that the permit goes away so to speak right so your neighbors because it's all about land use and protecting people's property rights um, are protected from the next person not you right or from or from you deciding that you want a 26 footer and putting it there and then of course it sticks out okay so those are the kind of things that we'll be talking about I just wanted to comment on the neighbor that spoke that we have these rules because if we can't control uh, trailers and boats all over town, you have them every which way. There, there are rules there for a reason. That's why it's a special permit to look at every uh, specific situation. And it, it's, it's, it's a necessary part of zoning uh, in, in land use for, for everybody in town. That's why we're taking a quick look at it. I just wanted to, to bring that out. Uh, I have no problems. I look at these and really what the neighbors have to say as much as anything else. Uh, but I'd be in a position of not to make it a permanent, you know, a, a renewal a, a situation because things do change over a period of time. Uh, you may not have the trailer. Other neighbors may move in and oppose it. Uh, that we should have, you know, some kind of a limitation, uh, you know, for a renewal. So that's some kind of a, uh, an acceptance with a with a renewal provision on it, and you know, say a couple of years, you know, to come back and um, uh, to renew the application to make sure there's no objections or no problems with the use. Yeah, Tom, I have a couple of questions for the applicant, if I may. Uh, one is that the, how long specifically is is this vehicle? What, what's so it's seventeen point five feet is the body of it. Okay, so what you're looking for then, if this is under 18 feet, yes. and I look for guidance from Peter here in terms of how you define the length of the vehicle, whether it includes the hitch or just the body of the of, of the um, of, of the RV. Um, That's a good question. Let me just uh, see if we actually define that. I think it's really the body. Um, so the issue here is it's not parked in there behind the house. Uh, that's the primary. Right. So it's, issue. so the issue is is is, is where it's where it's located. Yes. So, okay. Uh, how old is the this vehicle? Okay. So it's fairly new. Yes. And what's the useful, you know, the engineered useful life estimate for this vehicle? So yeah, I mean these they last very long. The quality the, the newer ones getting better and better. It's uh, real lightweight so it doesn't absorb a lot of shock being pulled. Uh, I don't do a lot of crazy mountain camping or like that. They're pretty well maintained sites, so I hope to have this for quite a while. Uh, and another thing I want to bring up is in, talking in, in term of terms, uh, if I were to replace this. Well, I was kind of getting to that when I was asking about the length that we would, you know, I think we'd want to put a limit in terms of the size of the vehicle uh, so that it wouldn't exceed, you know, the size that we set. Um, and, uh, but since it's, you know, within our scope, the issue is really the, the location of it. So I'd, I guess the, the 
if we would accede to your request, the permit would be limited to the look, you know, it, its location as opposed to location and, and size. So, um, okay, I think that that does it for me. Thank you. Um, would you have any objection to paving that strip? Now we look at these as temporary, but again, all that would make it is a double driveway, and those are advantageous to a lot of people, okay. especially if you have teenagers or young adults in the family or someone else, and, and you have two or three vehicles in the driveway someday. You know, you'd have a, a second, you know, a wide driveway. In fact, my my kids have given me heck for all not widening my driveway when I repaved it a few years. I, I, I've got a couple why estimates, I'm asking. so something I am going to do. Yeah, so you wouldn't have a problem with that. Absolutely not. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Any additional questions for the applicant, or uh, are we comfortable closing the hearing? Assuming there's nobody else that wants to speak. Move we close the hearing. Thank Second. you. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 That was Jim Music. Second. Um, She's okay. never heard his voice before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about a discussion here? Um, you know, obviously this always comes down to the, you know, to the neighbors, the neighbors at the time, and we've talked duration with uh, previous applicants, and I think it was always like five years kind of a thing. You know, I, I guess I could be convinced to go a little longer if necessary, but... You know, you know, I know the applicant's looking in perpetuity kind of thing at one length, or at least that's what I think I heard, but I, I guess I'm just not comfortable stuff happens, right? And I don't think it's particularly cumbersome once it's been approved next time, you know, to come back to do it again in a number of years, personally. Makes sense, Mr. Chin. And, uh, Makes sense. I throw, a, throw the condition in on the paving, too. No. No. You don't yeah. Want it, okay? No, I don't think. Uh, I would add, though, as a condition uh, that it would be that it would be a length of not to exceed 18 feet. Fair enough, right? So because of so, the back of the driveway is not going any farther back, so the longer you make it, the farther it comes. And I guess we could make it easy and make it an overall 20 feet or something like that, right? And just kind of no, cover well, it. Well, it makes it. <laughs> it makes the condition the, you know, the the uh, permit. Uh, conform to the you know the regulation in terms of uh, true enough. So that's would you care to make it. a motion, Tom? Uh, I'll give it a crack. Okay, I uh, move that we approve application number 1985-18-Z-14 Yell Street, um, subject to the following conditions that the uh, uh, permit to be granted will not be for a period not to exceed five years. Secondly, that the uh, uh, permit will uh, uh, permit a vehicle, uh, a recreational vehicle or trailer that has a length not to exceed 18 feet. And, and how about, it? should we tell them to park it on the side? Hmm. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that's, that's the where it point. is. Yeah, I mean, I, I stay on the side than be in the front. That's right? right. It'd be on the side. Okay, I'll add condition number three that the vehicle uh, be, uh, you know, when it is parked on this uh, lot, uh, be located uh, on the side, uh, to the side of the house that it is currently parked on. Hmm. Thanks, Tom. Somebody like this I'll second. second. Thank you, Tony. Any discussion? Yeah. yeah, I guess my only concern, what I've just looking at the pictures, it's hard to tell where the 17 feet is, where the 18 feet is, because if you look at the last picture, it looks like the front of it kind of hangs over the bottom part of it. So you know the, the you know the frame itself at the base may be 18 feet, but the whole length might be longer because this sticks out over it so I'd I'd just be more comfortable limiting it to 20 feet because you know so, it, so it, it kind of is consistent with the spirit of what we're doing and he's not going to go out and get a 28 foot one and put it in the same space 
you know, I just don't want him to get jammed up, up if it turns out that this thing is actually already 19 feet long. Yeah, so, I mean, there's there's room for him to back it up a little bit further should, like, three years from now he decides to trade it in and he gets one that's a foot longer than it. He can still get it flush to the house. So, I mean, if you add a little bit of fluff, there's no harm in that. I so, guess. so that's where I started, obviously, a few minutes ago. But if... You know, you raise a good point. If there's something officially in the thing that tells you how you measure it, maybe no, there isn't. And just coincidentally, the side of the building next to it is 20 feet in length, so that kind of coincides with what Rich is suggesting that it not exceed that 20 foot. I, I would exceed to that amendment. Okay. So it's a 20 footer on the side, five years. So it was a fourth one. 20 footer on the side. Was it just three items? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because George asked about paving, and I don't okay. think yeah, nobody seems to want it. Ground exactly. swell of support. Right. So that was, uh, that was Tom and Tony's. You guys were three or four that? Okay. So definitely five years. Oh, in five years. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so I mean, if somebody else moves in and they're still yeah. held to the 20 yeah. feet on the side, mm -hmm. the condition didn't change. And if they come in with, it would be a same. Right. Thing, right. It runs with the land, right? So, so the next person, when they sell four years from now, the next person has one year before th before they have to come in and, you know, re up it so or do something like that. Before they have to comply, so they got right. a thirty footer and for a year. No, it still only be a twenty footer. Right. For the year. Okay. Right? I guess I just the the parameters we approve run yeah. with the land, right? But like, when when would somebody get? A travel camper, and we decide no, that was a bad idea. And five years from now. Five years from now. <laughs> five years from now, when he comes in for renewal, oh, someone will come in for renewal in five years. And, and all whether, it be the property whether it's the property owner or somebody else, right? But all the neighbors have turned because over in five the years. Neighbors might, okay, so that's the all right. Follow, following the conversation. Okay. All right. We have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Okay. Five years, anyways. We'll see you in five years, and we'll all right. We'll talk about it again. Thank you. Have a good evening. Welcome. <clears throat> all right. Uh, the next item, item three point two, a public hearing again for application number nineteen eighty nine dash eighteen Z Matt Forrest seeking a special permit in accordance with section three point five point two. This is a home occupation for a law office in a residential zone at seventy two Somerset Street. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Be my guest. The floor is yours. Tell us what you're up to. Sure. Um, I did submit a letter with it, with this particular application. It kind of spells it out. Um, essentially, um, I own a small law practice in town. Um, in my house, there's an office that uh, is used on the side of the house. It's part of the, the downstairs, I guess, but there's a room which is used as a, as a law office. Uh, we've recently seen some nice growth uh, and we had started the law practice years ago, but it's been essentially in the age of the internet, so most of it's been virtual. So all of our staff essentially work at their houses, and without getting too deep into case management systems, it's all housed in the cloud. Um, and as some of the lawyers up here uh, know, even the communications with the court and the law office is all done digitally now. So, But since we have been in a growth process, we have had the need to um, begin to meet more and more face-to-face -face with the staff. So the request is to be able to um, be able to meet at my house with my staff, I guess, you know, and, and to do the work. Uh, there's no signage. Uh, we don't meet clients at the house at all. We've got off-site locations, which is sort of in a, a liquid space concept for those that under, sort of understand the liquid space concept with, with businesses now. Um, we we meet, might meet at the courthouse or, or do things off-site. So basically, this is purely administrative, no signage. Uh, we do have uh, storage for things like re some paper and the printer and toner and so on and so forth, but uh, we're not selling any products really out of it, so it's it's all clerical, phone calls, uh, mail, and and frankly even the mail is not that much because it's mostly mostly digital. We have a small mailbox that's not any bigger than anyone here, and it suits us just fine. So, so it's essentially the ability to be able to do that. There is parking in the rear, um, sufficient. I know in the letter it says up to seven spaces, but I didn't. I said uh, I wrote that to you to show the the amount of parking that is available. Not that there's any intention to use the seven spaces because I'm only requesting up to four. And even currently, 
um, uh, the, 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 the request is not even to have four on a regular basis, but just if I had to have an entire firm-wide meeting that four might show up. Uh, but really, the, the need is to meet on occasion. Uh, but I was instructed by the staff, Peter Gillespie, that I should ask for a uh, request, you know, what is the possibility to happen in any particular moment, and that seems to be the, uh, what might particularly happen if I had four people and want to have like an all-staff meeting, and they would all park in the back. And even with that, no car would come past the side because the parking at this store, four cars would all, you can actually store up to seven that would ne wouldn't even come past the front of the house. So that's the, in that's the intention. As far as the neighborhood goes, I'm certainly trying to maintain our house fairly well. Uh, but we're also on the street with this, uh, with the church. So there is uh, certainly on the weekend some regular operation. We are f four houses from the Celestine Highway. Uh, so not that I'm even contemplating that there would even be parking on the, on the street, but the neighborhood does uh, have some sort of business feel to it at, at moments in the, in the week where we do have uh, parishioners at the church and or the church itself sometimes has staff come in because the church offices are actually on Somerset Street as well, for those that don't know the neighborhood, uh, you know, sort of on a daily basis. And that's essentially it. Thank you. Sure. Questions? Nobody? So, so you have no client meetings, and, and if you, and do you have a meeting room or anything? When I saw the floor plan, it's like you just meet in your office, so if, if you do have your four staffers come, they're all in your, yeah, we have a dining room yeah. table. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to make it more sophisticated than it is. Uh, but yeah, um, they're, they're, it's kind of a liquid space concept where everyone has, has a workstation and everyone has their own laptops and it's all digital now. And, uh, you know, aside from it's phone calls, clerical and typing. Um, and that's that you can run an entire practice and all the meetings are, you know, at the courthouses, you know, that's, but that's what, that's what we do. So. I will say I live directly across the street from him and the only reason the only time I see any vehicles there are, is because I drive home for lunch and you know I'll maybe I'll see a car that's parked there but they're always tucked in the back um, any I've never seen like many cars there like for any kind of long duration meeting or anything like that but I don't think very many of our neighbors even know that anything is going on there so I can just uh, at least vouch for that. Is, is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this issue? <clears throat> Tom? Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. <clears throat> I'd first like to start out uh, and and point out the location of the sign that was posted in front of Mr. Forrest's house. A similar situation, in my opinion, to what went on down on the Salestine Highway a couple months ago. The sign is posted up against the shrubbery on the house. So I question the reason why it was put there. According to the regulations, it's supposed to be five feet from the street so that everybody can see it. I'm not sure everybody did was aware that there was an application pending. <clears throat> I would think the applicant should have been aware of that. Um, we also don't know if the form that was mailed out to everybody was filled out properly in the uh, case down on the Celestine Highway again. First time around, the form was not filled out correctly. Uh, they put the uh, applicant application number in where it was supposed to be the date of the meeting. And uh, I believe the only reason that the town found out about it was is one of the neighbors called and said, when is this thing going to take place? And so you reschedule the hearing. So I just hope that everybody's had been adequately advised. In the regulations, 352 home occupation, for the minor occupation, it says, uh, shall only involve employees stationed on the premises. So we've shifted into a major home oc occupation, and that's why the applicants, I believe, is uh, requesting a special permit. 
but D1 says it shall be carried on only by the inhabitants of the dwelling. So I don't see how you can allow uh, four employees to be in this home occupation situation. It, it exceeds what the regulation says. And, you know, having been in business myself, you know, the first year I operated out of my home as a consultant, and gee, that was great. I didn't have any overhead at all. I didn't have to pay any rent or anything. It was just whatever I made, put in my pocket. Well, as the business grew, much like Mr. Forrest's business, I had to expand and, and get a legitimate office to operate out of and, and pay all those overhead costs that go along with uh, growing a business. So I hope Mr. Forrest can continue to grow his business and become a sizable law firm in town. And I think there's plenty of available office space for him to do that and stay in town. So I don't really see where there's any wiggle room to uh, get out of having the uh, <clears throat> D1, which says, again, only by the inhabitants of the dwelling. Well, is that the reason for the permit request? Right. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, like, it's a so there's, there's regulations, and then you get a permit if you're not really complying with the regulations, right? Right. You want so, to similar to the case that you just witnessed with the camper bit being not in somebody's backyard, we deliberated and decided it was okay if it was in the side yard. So that's that's kind of a similar thing here, where it's not quite following the letter of the regulations, and then we, like to your point, there is a something that he's doing that's not complying with the regulations that we decide if a permit is appropriate for this situation. So that this is not a special permit requirement, T? D is not part of a requirement, is that what you're yeah. saying? So the regulations, uh, section 3.5, um, subsection 1E regarding home occupations, there are, uh, there's something called the home office Mm -hmm. There's something called a home occupation in compliance with all of the requirements of Section 3.52. And then there's home occupations that do not comply with Section 3.52, which are only permitted by special permit. Section. So this commission has the authority under the special permit to grant relief from... From, from any of those items. Correct. Okay. Yep. I stand on, corrected. On a case-by-case case basis. Okay. Yep. I think that's what I would have. But I would, again, I'm going to make this comment and not just directed at this particular application, but previous applications. I think the town staff ought to be able to verify that the letter that goes out to all the 300-foot uh, radius or whatever of uh, neighbors, that it's filled out properly. Your regulations or your instructions say that they have to provide proof that it was mailed, which I believe took place. And I also think that the town staff should go out and verify that this, the sign is placed where it's supposed to be and it's visible. It's, you know, I don't think that's too much to ask. I, I'm following George's lead. I, I read the newspaper and I see a notice and I take a walk over there. And I walked over there the day that the uh, Notice appeared in the in the newspaper, and it was up against the house. And I drove by this morning, and it was still up against the house. So I don't know if there would have been more people here or not. But I, I think, you know, you have these things laid out so that people follow the rules. And I question why, why people don't follow the rules. I don't know tonight what the reason is. A couple months ago, I, I believe the reason was to discourage anybody from finding out about the meeting. So I'm just throwing it out there that you might want to consider revising the procedure. Right. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you sp this is the second one in recent memory where the notice was not a correct. Is the, there a review process? Or do there is a review that? process. We go over the application form. In this case, I don't see it in the file. Maybe the applicant has a copy of his notice that he submitted, so we can submit it for the record. There is a copy of the mailings uh, in the file, so the mailing did go out to the neighbors. 
So uh, maybe the applicant can clarify that. In terms of the sign location, uh, I believe we did inspect the property um, and we did notice that the sign was in the bushes. Uh, I believe the applicant was instructed to move the sign. You did not talk to him about that? Okay. So Denise was um, tasked with that and I apologize for, for her not doing that, but um, um, so I, I, I can't really defend that one, but. I'm joking, the sign was visible from the street. It's yeah, not I, very far from the street. Right. Uh, we're, we're talking about notice to the public. Anybody who drives by the house saw the sign. Uh -oh. okay. <laughs> and it, it is my position as a member that an owner doesn't have to take a, uh, have a surveyor go out and measure how close that sign is, the five feet. I'm sorry. Right. I well, mean, and we enough don't... is enough. Uh, a sign was there, it was completely visible. It was noticed in the paper. That's certainly sufficient to me. And it, should be sufficient, especially the distance from the, <coughs> from the bushes to the street. I'd like to see how many feet that is. It's, it was very, very visible. So let, let so the record reflect that. So, and we don't really, at least in my mind, have to resolve it. It's more a matter of, you know, I would expect that there's sort of a check of those issues that the, uh, that the commenter made, that Tom had made, that in general we're looking at this stuff before it's posted rather than just leaving it up to the public to write their own, you know, news release, right? So, okay, is there um, additional things we want the applicant to come back up? We've got questions for him? I have, yeah. Anybody else in the public? Oh, I'm uh, sorry, you're absolutely right. Is there anybody from the, else in the public who wishes to speak before? So, doesn't look like uh, it. I'll, I'll um, <laughs> ask some questions, Jim. Um, you said um, <coughs> that when you have the four aides in or okay for a meeting sure around the table whatever that you can squeeze their cars in your driveway and they're still behind the front of the house yes there's plenty of room for that really but they, none of them can move because that's a pretty tight side right well they can go they go side by side so if there was someone that was certainly really? like the one in the back then the person in the okay. front would move out and they would and have never had any problem with it how long not are not they normally enough. there for these kind of meetings? Um, it's or the group. The really, the, the um, you know, normally. as a, as a group of four, yeah, uh, an hour, an hour or two. Yes, uh, when at all the four of them are there at the same time. Yeah, at right. The same time. Uh, often it's some come early, do certain things. Exactly. And, then they eat and, and sometimes they're, uh, they might come in once every, uh, or an individual with their particular task might come in once every and two yeah. weeks. Somebody might have to go out and move a car or two around, right? Yeah, uh, on, on a normal uh, system, there might, uh, there might be two, uh, two staff there at any one particular time. Okay. And only if we had to sort of have an all hands meeting or some type of a review. Because before four. I came in tonight, I was going to restrict to two. But, uh, you know, you make a case that the four can be there, with it, even though it might be a tight situation in the site, and they can move their cars as yeah. necessary. And, it, and uh, as it does hold more. That would be for the four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I think even if you just sort of looked at, and I know you have the, the plan of the layout of the bottom of my house, then putting more than four might be a a tough situation and that might be the point of growth of course where we sort of leap to the next level in fact and that would see be sort of a normal a normal course of growth for a smaller business thank you typical even so so in the course of that discussion um it sounded like there was more people coming to the house than i was um envisioning initially so on a given day there are four people working for you, with you, whatever. There's a group of five. Um, yes, no. And how many? How many are coming on any given day? Probably about two, on any given day. Okay, so there and are so still it's two. It's really two a people. unique occasion that uh, all four would be there. Right, but two people are coming and going. Maybe even like a holiday party, <laughs> you know, or something yeah, like right. that. Right, which you know doesn't sound like a big deal, right? You know, so four people show up at my house for a personal party, and you know, all the time. But, yeah, that's um, true, but I'm trying to, of course, <coughs> right, But every, every day, every day, two, two people show up, coming and going. Correct, which is See, even more Two wide. people line a problem, uh, what right. the chairman and I kind of suggesting. But, uh, and well, four, well, speak you, for yourself, it's a business, so I'm, um, you know. Not a big deal. Okay, thank you. 
You can you can speak for yourself. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is a business, and two and two people coming and going yeah. routinely, right? And so yeah. three on um, you know once a week, and maybe four showing up once a month. I don't know, but that's 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 a business. Other comments? I do have the um, I mean a copy that I just have in my file of what was sent out. I know there was. Insinuation, but it goes with the letter. I'm happy to share it with you. Maybe in, your, in your application, what hours of operation are you requesting and days of the week? Um, you know, we're pretty much a regular nine to five group, Monday through Friday. And uh, how long you, have you been in business? Uh, I would say about 2007, so maybe 11 years now. All out of your office, so out of your home office. Yeah, recently I was at a different location. I bought this, purchased this house about, or my wife technically did, uh, uh, maybe three years ago, three and a half years ago. And it had a nice room on the side in order to have a little office there. So that was one of the reasons we purchased the house. Thank you. So, so help me understand where would you expect to grow beyond a home occupation? We'd have to look for space. Uh, yeah. yeah, how many how many staff is that, and how often are they coming when you're going? Now nah, that's too much in your own mind. In my own mind, it would be more than four, because that that's sort of the the working space that we have right now. There's sort of four um, regular spaces for a computer and phone, and um, the printer can probably take that much. <laughs> but yeah, I think. Probably more than four, which is what I requested, would probably be at that point where we'd have to seriously consider that, that growth pattern. I mean, personally, I think four is a lot. You know, I think it kind of goes beyond what we consider for home occupation. That's my personal opinion. Sure. You know, I mean, you're probably at a certain level where maybe you should get outside and, you know, a home or a real office, uh, you know, outside of a residential area. That's my personal opinion. So I think four, personally, it seems like a lot every day. Um, so I, I think my personal opinion is that. Uh, you know, two uh, would I feel comfortable? Four is just I think you're you're kind of pushing the limits. If they're every coming day. every day, four every if day they're coming just every be day. right. Yeah, we don't we don't operate like like that because of the virtual abilities of the firm. There's there is that those off occasions, um, which are sort of like an all firm meeting that that happens. That's why it's the regular is the two, but we do have the occasion where we have to get together. Maybe it's a whatever for whatever reason. Big but case. Is that two or, every day, nine to five? No, not even. Uh, even sometimes um, uh, we have some people that come in from like 10 to 2, uh, get their work done, maybe get some signatures, which happens to be the nature of the I'm business, yep. right, and all that. So it's, it's very liquid, and li they call it liquid because it's a flexible schedule. M most of the work of the firm is done actually off-site, uh, but there are those occasions that, you know, we might have to have that all on-site meeting, so I didn't want to misrepresent the, to the board at all. So, and even, even the two, um, they're, they're not even the nine to five, but they're, that is technically the sort of the, the running office time because I'm there as well. So that's sort of how we operate. Sort of expanding on that theme. Um, if one of us were employed as, as one of your paralegals, how much time you know, per day and maybe per week would we anticipate spending on this particular site doing our our job on your behalf it would it would really determine depend on what your particular position was so for example if there was let's say a head paralegal it might be sort of more of a that was regular nine to five hours but if you were running uh, more of like a marketing sort of the marketing department if you will and i think i guess i'm saying that not <laughs> super technically but uh you might do most of your work off-site, or if you're sort of in litigation, that might be a lot of off-site where you might come in once or twice a week for four hours to get documents signed, um, reviewed, and so on and so forth. So, so have it, it a depends on the kind of structure in your employment situation, so that you have, you know, one person with with you know one job designation who's going to be there roughly nine to five every day, and then. What about the other three? Uh, it, it varies as for, work, for workflow purposes and also their functionality within the firm. Okay, in and terms of, a, let's say, an average estimate. Yeah. Um, as far as an average estimate, I would say, um, I 
you know, two people might average six hours a day, and then the other two on site might average two hours a day. You know, average. And, and you know, so they might be there one day for, for four hours, but then not there for two more days for, for the other amounts. Yeah, yeah, that's why I questions. asked kind of per yeah. day and per week. Right, okay. and, and it, like any business, like there's an ebb and flow to, to what we right. do. There's a lot of cases, there's trials, then there's not, like in the summertime, <laughs> everyone's on vacation, so there's think, a, that's even less. You can't get the nail on the head when you say this is a business. Now, I guess my question is when you're opening up an office, I know when I have to open up an office, I have 88 bathrooms, I and mean, when is, what, when does that trigger that next level where this becomes really an office and not really a, a home residence? Yeah. yeah, that's just my personal question. Maybe that's a, something that uh, is beyond and above what uh, this committee is here for tonight. Yeah, I mean, and, and as we're sitting here talking tonight, I mean, I'm trying to remember what other ones we've already approved and what kinds of, you know, volumes of customers, clients, employees, and so forth, um, you know, have been permitted. And, you know, I, 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 can't, remember. I can't remember anything that involved four employees. Um, you know, I can remember ones that involve one, you know, the hair, the and then the there are also the hair salons yeah. where you have yeah. kind of a steady parade of yeah. clients. So, you know, it, it's, you know, it's basically the intensity or the impact on the neighborhood, you know, as a whole that is is what the, you know, the factors that we have to look at, um, you know, and, and is it different to have two non-residents working there from having one non-resident working there and having people coming every 45 minutes to have their dog yes. washed or their teeth cleaned or whatever. Which is correct. I mean, the traffic is the controlling sort of impact to the neighborhood versus the number of people in the house or, um, I guess, in my mind. Because when we were talking about, like, a, a salon or somebody who's doing hair out of the garage with their chair, they can, we, we would follow up. We would ask all the questions about how many people per hour are you going to be seeing, how many clients per day. Uh, we're not really seeing any clients per day at this location. We're seeing employees that come on a sort of a rolling schedule depending on need. So. I understand what we've done before and then two employees. However, one of the purposes of what we're doing is a special permit is we're being trying to be flexible. We don't have a specific standard. And this is an application which is different because uh, I can I agree with you, the, it's the in and out has always been a problem with me, people coming in and out, because that, that's different in a residential neighborhood. But if we have a condition where no clients are gonna be seen on premises, and you have a schedule which is not a constant schedule, which is not gonna interfere with the neighborhood. If we had four full-time employees working 40 hours a week, I would feel a heck of a lot different than I would, uh, and, I, and I have to commend the applicant for his honesty in, in coming in and explaining the fact that you're not having these people all the time. Um, it, it's, it's a rare occasion that you're gonna have four people there, uh, and if they are, they may be there for a couple hours, uh, no more than that. Uh, I think that we can use our flexibility uh, you know, to say this is a, one of those situations which, you know, it's not a problem with the neighborhood, especially when there's no opposition from the neighborhood uh, and from the neighbors. That's my concern. Yeah, I mean, Matt, I mean, just, I'm just listening to everybody here. If it came down to it, would you, it's probably not your first choice, but if we gave you time to see how it all goes, you come back, if there's any problems or anything like that, or maybe even within that time frame, your business grows enough where you end up moving anyway. I mean, I'm, just so we have latitude to come up with a solution for you, if that is what, if that's needed. I'm not saying it is needed, but. Yeah, that's certainly fine. I mean, I'm willing to follow the rules and the, whatever the, this particular board would like to do. I mean, I'm highly confident that uh, we've got plenty of 
the cars will be all off street, even though there is a lot of parking, but they'll be off street. We've got plenty of room for that. Um, and we're a non-impact business that's not moving product and it's all clerical inside. That's, so yeah, I mean, if you'd like me to come back in a few years because see what the neighbors think, that's certainly fine. And I'm sure that they will see that they probably don't even know the difference. Yeah, my, my situation is that, it, that it's basically a kind of business that is relatively non-impactful within the neighborhood. Uh, people aren't really going to notice the, the activities that are going on in the house and there's not very, tra there's very little, little traffic in and out and, and so it's not a noxious kind of use uh, that I think would interfere with property values or uh, the rights of neighboring property owners to come and go as they wish or to, uh, or to deny them the, uh, uh, the use and enjoyment of their own property. So, and, and given the, you know, the, uh, the kind of economy that we have, I think we need to recognize a, a need to be, you know, rather flexible in terms of dealing with, with uh, the way people, you know, earn an income in order to survive. So, um, I, I personally have uh, no objection to granting the, the applicant's uh, uh, permit, so. Yeah, I think in terms of the impact to the neighborhood, if you have four people in the house or if you have two people in the house, you're only gonna see the one car that's right up the end of the driveway. They're all gonna be inside. You're not gonna have a huge amount of client flux. So I, mean, I, I don't see the difference between like I wouldn't notice the difference between four people working in the house or two on if it was working if they were there all day. I guess is my point. So, so do we have questions for the applicant? Because I, you know, we all want to get to this discussion, right? But should we be closing the hearing first? Is there any more questions for the applicant? I I appreciate you know Jim's question a moment ago. There may be some latitude in a. Um, in a path forward there. But any questions to the applicant or is there anybody from the public? I have one question. Okay. You mentioned the four vehicles. How many personal vehicles on top of the four will be parked at the residence? I'm just trying to get them, you know, you said once a year for a party, but if, do you own two personal vehicles or? We do own two vehicles and we have mm -hmm. a garage. We have a two, two bay garage in the back as well. Okay. So the, four vehicles we've got room for the four vehicles and the two bay garage so okay. even if all the vehicles started. were well there were a working class family but if they were all in there uh, there would still be room for five more and and just again you know really on any given day it's really about two uh, because they're all floaters it's really just for those all staff meetings that it would be more but yeah. <coughs> but the so, permitted request is for the four in case it gets there, and that's I want to be fair to everybody here and as forthcoming as possible. So, Matt, if you could uh, see the microphone for a moment, Tom. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I, I want to go on record as uh, disagreeing with Mr. Silver comments about the clarity of the sign. There is a procedure that I believe the applicant was given at the time he uh, was at planning and zoning. It clearly states that the sign shall be located in the front yard, not more than five feet from the street line and clearly visible to the general public. The sign is at the setback line it's three feet, four feet off of the foundation. So that you don't need a, a surveyor out there to measure that. He clearly did not put the sign in the right place. And I think if you want to you know, follow the letter of the law, you should reschedule this meeting and have them post the sign properly and have another meeting. I'm not asking for that. I'm just asking for somebody to agree with me that the applicant did not follow the procedure and he should have been notified of it by town staff and 
put the sign in the right place. That's it, okay? Secondly, I would like to know what prompted the applicant to submit this application for a special permit. He's been operating his law firm with four employees for at least four years, from what I believe. And prior to that, he operated the business out of his prior residence on Spring Street, 25 Spring Street. Uh, I'm not aware of any permit being issued for that operation. So I'd like to know why, all of a sudden, now we're here discussing the special permit. I suspect somebody said, hey, why are you operating without a permit? So now all of a sudden we're gonna follow all the rules and you're gonna take it on the applicant's word that he has X amount of employees for X amount of time and if it goes over a certain number, then he's likely to start looking for an office building. And lastly, I think you're setting a precedence if you approve this application by having four employees plus the land uh, property owners working in a house. There's a lot of homes in Wethersfield that you could do that. I happen to have a very large driveway. I could probably have 20 employees at my house and nobody would ever know. But I don't think that's the intent of the regulations. I think the intent of the regulations were to, to grant a permit for the mom and pop one or two person operations. And to his uh, success, Matt has been able to build up a business, or it's a viable business, it has employees, and all the things that go with employees, and unfortunately part of growing a business is having to lease some space and, and have a proper law office. And there's several attorneys up here that know all about law offices. It costs a lot of money to have an office, but that's part of making money. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so I think we resolved the, the sign location, but um, I was wondering the same thing. Why, why are we here? Was this uh, an enforcement action or? Uh, I don't think an official enforcement action. I, at, at one point in a, in a not so distant past, um, Attorney Forrest and I had a conversation and, and I think uh, subsequent to that, he came in and, and got the permit, got or you. applied for the permit, so. Yeah, which is not uncommon. I mean, it does applic have, the applicant yep. before us was the same way, right? So. It's a part of a discussion that goes on or, or someone sees something that, that should be addressed, right? Okay. Um, George? We're gonna discuss an hour. Or oh, you wanna close the hearing? I think we got everybody unless you've got something to follow up with the applicant. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jim. Second. And Tom, thank you for your second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So George. Um, I'm concerned with the precedent here. Uh, and we are talking about four employees, even if they're not all there very often, or a lot at once, because I can see someone coming in and uh, asking, well, next time you, you allowed it on Somerset Street, uh, why can't I have it? And they're there five hours a day, all, all four of them. Or somebody else coming in saying, well, you allowed, you went up to four, now why, why can't we go up to five? So we'd be ending up with a lot. I wouldn't want in my neighborhood um, significant number of employees in residential structures on my street or in my area. So it bothers me, and for that reason, I may be voting against this. Also, the site is tight. No matter what you say about being able to get cars in that driveway, uh, you have to move cars from the back end and move them from out, out in the side to get out of there. I know uh, when you start parking in that particular location because I went, went down there and walked it. But, uh, so it kind of bothers me the precedent more than anything because I think it can, as the applicant says, he can get along with moving cars around in, in the driveway and in the back area. And I, I agree with my fellow commissioner. Really, Go ahead, he George. actually <laughs> could make pave more back there if we needed to. Uh, but we, did, we, had, we didn't get into that, so. Anyway, that's my feeling about it. I don't always agree with you, George, but on this one, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we no, can I have a philosophical that. problem with this. You know, it's just reaching a threshold of that it could be up to four 
employees. You know, I'm running out of space in Glastonbury. Maybe I should, you know, bring them to my house here in Wethersfield and, and utilize that office. You know, I think you, you're getting to a point where you know, you've grown, you know, large enough where, uh, you know, maybe you should consider looking at other other office space. Um, I understand the liquid office, but it uh, sounds like, you know, you're, you, now you need that face-to-face, -face, and that, that's my uh, personal opinion. It's really, you know, I don't want to set that precedent um, for this, in this particular case. So. I'm going to speak in favor of the application um, only on, on the aspect that we're not having four full-time, we're not even, we couldn't even say there's going to be four, four full-time people there in, in one day. There may be, you know, you know sporadically. And, you know, I would, you know, presume that Mr. Forrest, if he's going to change the hours or anything else, that we're going to put strict uh, uh, conditions, you know, on this uh, so that he would have to come back for, you know, any kind of a revision if things were going to change. I don't think it's, it's a precedent uh, uh, unless you're going to have people coming we're not going to have people coming in and out. That's a big thing as far as I mean. You can look at the number of employees on a part-time basis, but you're not going to have clients coming in. You're not going to have a sign in front of the house. Uh, you're not going to have anything that anyone driving by the house is going to know that there's any business going on within the house. And I think that's the big difference. I've never yet seen an application in one of my sh relatively short time on this commission where we've had a home office where you don't want to sign you don't have a client or customers coming in and out, uh, appointments being made. So I see this is a real different kind of situation that we're not setting any kind of uh, a precedent or an example uh, that's going to harm uh, what we're doing as part of this, with this commission in approving these things. Mr. Chairman, a couple of things. One is the comment on the number of employees. Based upon what the applicant has said, it sounds as though that that in, in, if you look at it in terms of full-time you know, full employees on, on site, that he's going to have roughly the equivalent of two rather than four, even though he's had a total of four within his practice. But given the limited number of hours that each will be you know, on, on the premises, it winds up being an average of about you know, two full-time equivalent employees on on site, and that 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 seems to be a less intensive number of uh, of business uh, activities, as opposed to say four full time equivalent employees on site. Um, and, uh, and secondly, I as I understand the procedures, we should probably have a a motion, in, you know, before us to discuss, uh, you know, as we are dis, you know discussing the the merits and the merits of the application. So uh, to that end, um, I should like to move that uh, the, uh, uh, the commission uh, approve application number 1989-18Z uh, for 72 Somerset Street um, uh, with the one condition that the approval will be for a term not to exceed five years. And that, and if I can speak in favor of the application or in favor of the motion, uh, I, I tend to think, given you know, given that we don't know what the you know, the outcome of the practice will be, uh, it looks like the trend is is that it's, you know business activity is going to increase. So this gives us the you know, control to come back in five years and re-examine this if he so reapplies. Yeah, I mean, so I think I agree with the proposal. I think you might get some pushback from a couple people on five years, but um, not from me. Um, but I think. So you want to just second it for purposes, and then we'll just. Oh, I'm sorry. Later? Second. Yeah. You want to do that? Okay. I'll second that. But uh, yeah, just for discussion purposes, I mean. The time limit seems to be the more appropriate sort of restriction as opposed to saying, no, you can't have four people, you can only have two. Just because of the, like the, if, if the neighbors uh, decide that there's too many instances of four people there at one point and they actually start noticing that, 
then in the number of years that he has to come back, then that comes up. And if there are no complaints um, at that point, then I don't know, you re-up it or, or something. But um, I think the time restriction is the, the most appropriate as opposed to limiting a home <coughs> business, which is something that we should generally be in approval of as long as it doesn't negatively impact the neighborhood, which this business hasn't. Okay. I have a question so, maybe for Peter. The, your memo to us and his submission says the office is 286 square feet, but the floor plan shows 108. Yes. The uh, narrative submitted by the applicant had the 286 square feet. Um, I'm assuming that it includes the office and then there was mention of the dining room being used. So maybe that part of that room um, was factored in, but the dimensions of the office on the floor plan are nine by 12. Yeah, because so. I mean, I, frankly, I was just trying to picture five grown adults. That was my question before, right? The size of a child's bedroom, not killing each other. <laughs> But, but there are, you know, we just talked about the fact that there are two people who spend a great deal of their, most of their time there, six hours a day. So there's three people working in here all the time. Yeah. Right. yeah. And two people, you're working some indeterminate liquid amount of time. <clears throat> right. So... So I'm concerned, uh, you know, about the precedents, sort of. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about it opening a door. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not saying I, I won't approve it, but um, I am concerned that it, it does open a door, and, and where do we shut the door the next time, right? Um, I, I, can, I can agree with, uh, with Ryan's assessment that whether there's two people or four people there full time, once they're there, we do, do we know, right? It's not like the cars are parked along, longitudinally along the street. We'll get to that in a minute because I think one of the conditions should be parking in the back. Um, but once they're there, comings and goings are what generates disruption to the neighborhood, right? So I can I can envision that you know maybe four isn't the end of the world, even if it's permanent. But but it does run with the land, right? So I do want to put a duration on this, <clears throat> and I also would like to see you know it revisited to commenters uh, point you know do the neighbors all know one does do the other neighbors know maybe they didn't and maybe we should be you know promoting that you know that this home occupation move elsewhere you know um, eventually and, and and promote it to grow but almost kind of promoted by saying you know you'll come back and talk to us again and we'll see you know what's going on in some period of time that's probably shorter than five years Ryan, I think Ryan was reading the tea leaves properly. Five is a little long for me. Um, um, so, so what is it that's going to convince me? So this is not dead center in the middle of, I don't want to pick out a, a neighborhood, but it is very close to the Silas Dean Highway where there's more traffic probably than most residential neighborhoods anyways on many days. So is is this a better place than perhaps the next one that comes before us that wants four you know, employees and, and, and maybe some clients coming and, you know, the fact that there's no sign that works in my favor. So there's just things I'm, 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 kind of, I'm sitting on the edge, right? I, I, I could probably be convinced uh, to approve this, but I'm certainly concerned about the precedents and everything else and what this, the next uh, one looks like. I mean, Somerset where is, it is. A, is a high volume cut through for traffic going from Walker Hill down to South Dean because you miss all the lights and there's no stop sign or anything that like well, there's the one on Herbert, but um, there's no there's no lights, there's no anything mm -hmm. that you have to worry about. You can. And as a transportation feet. guy, that's where you chose to live. You didn't Absolutely. know that. Absolutely, why not? No, I chose it because my <laughs> wife really liked the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, the and in terms of on-street parking, it's it's utilized very heavily by the church, to the point where it's alternating one way on you know during. Uh, during those during those times, but not necessarily on others. Um, but it's yeah, it is a heavily used. So even if there was, you know, if I have people who park on my, on the street in front of my house, you wouldn't know that they were mine or if they were going to church. So, um, but 
that being said, I do agree that we can stipulate that everybody has to park in this backyard. There's ample room for it, and I think that that's been the process for the last year or two. Everybody, I, I haven't seen any cars parked out in front of his house going home for lunch. So I suppose I'm the I'm the appropriate spy on this guy. <laughs> I would accede to uh, that addition onto the conditions. Uh, that being that being the parking in the back, right? And um, what was the other one? Uh, the, the duration of the permit. Do we do we and talk I, about I, different I said five years to start the ba discussion. basically for purposes of discussion and also, you know, the the early, the previous one was for a five year period, um, and typically, unless it's something that we want to monitor very closely, you know, five years seems to have been sort of a reasonable period, but if the commission in its wisdom uh, collectively seeks a shorter period, I'm willing to, uh, you know, to uh, accede to that. What are you guys thinking? Oh, I'm sorry, George? Yeah, uh, two or three other issues here. Can we get a fly swatter? The same lines? There's a fly up here that's driving us crazy. <laughs> It's been, it's been going <laughs> <long. laughs> <laughs> yeah, No, we got a mallet. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, don't, I know this commission depends upon <laughs> testimony from the neighbors, and we feel strongly about that. It goes back all the time I've been on this commission, and I think we lean on that even more now. And just because they don't show up in a neighborhood doesn't mean or within the 300 foot line in this case and most of them uh, doesn't mean uh, they're not going to see it later and wonder about it. Um, two other things. Um, are we going to are we going to honor this how many people you can have in this kind of a, a special district situation? Are we going to allow one in Old Weathersfield? Look how they came out the other night on something that we were dealing with. They, they treat that area down there like it's very, very important, and it is to all of us, to me, to the town. I don't live there, but I, I feel it's a very critical thing financially for this town and for the future of it. But you know, would we say, oh, you can't, no. In Old Weathersfield, we can't have more than two in a business. Uh, are we going to do that so there's a differential? And, uh, um, and the other thing is on these kind of issues, and it may go on many of them, including both of them tonight perhaps, the staff monitoring of these kind of matters gets to be difficult. And I notice we don't put in that they got to report back to us on some of the matters discussed, including how many, if they have more than two employees or they go all, two, two or three of them go full time or something like that. And how do we, how does the staff check on it? Well, it's not gonna be done. As far as I'm concerned, it never has been. And I don't see it being done now with staffing the way it is and the ability to handle it. So those are some of the issues I just wanted to bring up now. Thank you. And the special, and the special permit is all about site-specific issues, right? And so that's kind of why I said I could see this location, but I agree with you completely. You know, in Old Weathersfield, not only will the public probably not like it if you bring it up, right, but there are plenty of other neighborhoods in town where- They're gonna be very strict down there. Right, and, 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 and the, the patterns are different. Go ahead. Well, we don't have anything in there's only regulations, but remember, this is kind of a policy rather than something which is contained, you know, within the zoning regulations. Technically, we could amend the zoning regulations and you can have a home office cannot exceed so many. But aren't you establishing a precedent so that not necessarily? See, I don't believe you we don't are believe because that? every situation is different, George. Right. So in other words, if I would I not be so. in favor of this if we had full floor the people working forty eight hours a week. Okay. Uh, I, I think. Yeah, but what about the person that comes in with three and says, "Well, I'm we have to look at that. Time. We have to look at that. Every every case is different." And, you know, that's why we do a special permit. If it didn't get a special, you could just put it in. You can't exceed so many people. We
We don't have that anywhere in the regulation. We're leaving it to the discretion of the commission. And to me, that means you look at the specific application and what it's gonna, how it's effect on the neighborhood. And if it's gonna be different because of the operation, it's different. I don't think it's setting any, you, you gotta compare apples to apples. I, I concur with Dan's position on this. I mean, this, this particular use is, is, seems relatively innocuous. Yeah. It's not going to really hurt anybody. And, uh, but if you had, uh, say, you know, something like a hair salon or something of that sort coming in, you know, I'd be looking rather askance if that is a home occupation where you have you know, a lot of uh, uh, traffic vehicle input you know, trying, coming into the property. Um, you know, in this case, all he's got is you know his you know his, himself and his four associates, you know, none of whom, only one of whom, is really full time on the site. So, um, you, know, you know, and they're there, and once they're you know they're there, you know, nobody notices it. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not uh, you know heavily trafficked. It's not going to interfere with other people coming and going or with their property values or anything of that sort. So uh, it just seems to be relatively innocuous, uh, you know, deviation from what is, you know, generally permissible as a matter of right under the home regulation uh, uh, section of, of our zoning regulations. And uh, it just doesn't seem to be you know, not a big deal, quote, unquote. <laughs> Jim? You know, it, it's different if you had a sign. I think the sign makes a big difference on a piece of property. When you, when you drive by uh, uh, Forest Law and a big sign, you know, you know, you're not having any advertising. You don't know what's there. Jim? No clients. Commissioner Allard's feedback, since he is directly across the street from us, is, is a big input to me. And I like the case-by-case -case basis on a lot of things like this. And I am concerned with precedent. <laughs> One thing I this applicant has gone it is a law office and he said the type of law or how he practices law I mean just my limited exposure to lawyers are they don't work a lot of days they have a lot of days off how are they <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny I was a, <laughs> I, I have a lawyer I have a need for a lawyer right now too and I'm going to go back and ask him whether I can have a reduced fee because I think he's working from his home <laughs> <laughs> system is you know holidays he's not a seven day a week operation that type of thing so i'm a little bit more comfortable with this this trade if you will than other trades and then going back to when we have had hair salons i remember a few in particular and it's a regular thing you know, every hour on the hour it's but sometimes they only had one client like there's one over on uh wells road that i'm well aware of and that's a big site over there so there are differences in the oh absolutely and that's why the case-by-case -case yeah. basis to me is So a couple, couple things, came, um, should we be thinking about putting uh, a, a um, uh, requirement on this thing that there will only be the four, is it, you know, that, that the business can operate here as long as there's the residents plus four employees, that's all we're talking about. Um, I and really I don't know how you would enforce, enforce that. I think I, the enforceability, you know, of, of, you know, the volume of traffic is going to be in the time limitation and in the, you know, feedback over the term of, you know, the, the neighbors to this operation. I, I don't disagree. I was, I was asking and it's been presented as four, so I, I, I don't think we necessarily need to be any more specific than that. Any reason to limit the number of time four people come to the business? You know, that's the same thing, right? You're never going to be able to, but well, limited see. numbers of, you know, times when the four, I'm just throwing it out there as some other constraint to put on this I would think about it in terms of impact to the neighborhood and if you have four people that pull in and they're in there for two hours or eight hours uh, it's the same impact so I guess I, but if you have four people that are there for an hour mm. you know sequentially then it's a different impact okay yeah. you know which frankly I mean the only thing that I really have any qualms about is you know, four employees. I mean, it, it just strikes me as 
a little above and beyond the, the spirit of the home occupation, you know, that we've talked about, you know, to have basically a five person work environment, you know, in one or two rooms of somebody's house. Um, and, you know, the fact that two of, you know, one of them is mostly full time, one is close to full time, and the other two are, you know, occasional, almost cuts the other way in terms of, you know, the, the coming and going. I mean, if there were four people who were going to show up at eight, park in the back of the house, and, you know, maybe they'll have a carpool for lunch and then leave everybody at five, you know, the, the number of trips is less than if you have five people who have kind of flexible, arbitrary, unpredictable, unpoliceable schedules. All right, well, we have a motion to approve. It's got two, two constraints on it. The word is escaping me. Conditions. Parking in the rear and, and two years, I think, was the last thing I heard. And is that something that both of you would agree to? It was two years? You started at five, but did I hear two, and do you uh, both agree? Yeah, that's what. Uh, if, I'll certainly vote for it if two is the only alternative. I would, I would say three might be more reasonable in this case. <laughs> so it's, it's your. Do we hear three? <laughs> 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 All right, we're, we're trying to get. To yes, or I presume that uh, you know you two you two are trying to get to yes. So I'm very much in favor of the three, but if we get Garner's support for this, I mean, you know, I would I would have certainly agree to two. Uh, it would give us uh, uh, those who have some questions a, a better, you know, closer period of time to adjust if, if in fact that became a problem. All right. So I think the three most outspoken are all in three years. So. The, mo the motion is three years in parking in the rear, right? As presented by the applicant for employees plus the residents. <clears throat> Any more reason to discuss it or should we do the head count? If, if, if it passes, great. If it doesn't, you know, we can talk about a different, a different one, right? So everybody understand it? Three years. All those in favor say aye. 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 How many you got? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Close enough. All right. All those in favor say, all those not in favor say aye. And I think we'll have four, right? So that's fine. Okay. It passes. You've got a you've got a permit for three years. Parking in the rear. Okay. All right, Matt. Good luck, Matt. All righty. Um, other business, I do, I do see other people in the office, or in the office, listen to me, other people in the audience, um, maybe for public comment? No. Nothing, nothing that you want to jump to? Th no. Take care. Um, so I'd suggest that we take things out of and just come to public comment. Do you have something, Frank, that you're, you want to talk to us about? I do. Come on up. I don't know if I have the the right to come back and revisit what was already done, and I'm not going to reopen anything that was already done. But I do have questions, and I want to have some comments from myself addressed to the committee on what happened uh, a month ago on an application that I submitted. And I don't know if that's permitted at this time to do so. So I'm asking. So this is just public comment. Public comment. comment. Yep. Okay. Say whatever you want. You can so comment. I can make comments, and then public comments. Yeah. Okay. And then can I ask questions to, to, to get answers if I can out of that or not? So I, I would suggest unless it has a bearing on an application, maybe not, but. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll start. Um, and obviously everybody knows that I'm here in reference to what I was tr attempting to do with the Masonic <coughs> home in Old Weathersfield. Um, and I'm uh, concerned on the way that it went down on that day. You, Tom, as you missed a, I, a sparkling I event. And, I did. Uh, I thought Richard was going to have to call the police and or uh, totally so stressed out beyond <laughs> the means. So um, I, I don't know if, if, the, if 
the application went the wrong way because of the environment or the hostilities of where it went. Uh, but I left this satisfied and I left that uh, my integrity and, and, and my word um, were not gonna mean anything to this committee and I live uh, off of what I say and the way I'm gonna do things. So I'm just gonna go through some notes. They're not gonna be in any general order. Um, I get very nervous and very personable with things. So I try to write them down as best as I can and I always screw it up anyway. <laughs> so uh, with that, I'll just go down and, and and address my frustrations and, and try to address some of the things that I was told I couldn't answer and some of the questions that were being asked that I could not answer uh, from this committee. So I, I found it frustrating when I was sitting here listening to that entire process of what was happening. Um, and I did everything in the order I was told to do things. So it was just, it was disheartening to me. So one of the things that I wanted to mention was um, I wasn't done with the historical society when we were doing the application. Uh, it came down to a matter of timing. We were still dealing with the historical society and the plans that we were doing. Um, I was denied without prejudice, meaning that I could go back and resubmit the plans. And I have them here, and I was going to pass them on. I just forgot to bring them up, and I'll put them out for you here in a minute. Um, so. It just happened that the order of the process and how long it took to get through planning and zoning, I mean the historical district, that planning and zoning caught up with me. I called Peter Gillespie on that day and I mentioned to him very clearly that I was not done with the historical society, I did not have the plans completed and I was gonna ask if I should table this meeting. He said no, um, plans are not needed, this meeting is not addressed for that. It's just gonna be the understanding of how and what you want to do. Um, so that's how I ended up going into where I was on that day. Um, so I didn't bring any plans, I didn't bring anything for conversation. My attorney knows me very well that I get very emotional and she told me not to say a word. Sit there and just listen and do whatever they tell you. And then I started listening and I started to get angry because I couldn't speak. Um, and things were going on and it wasn't right um, for what we were trying to do. Um, so one of the questions that came out of the committee was, why did I choose to go this way? I don't know why I went this way. I was told to go that way, and I got crucified for it. It's not right. I asked for a simple, clearly modification to the regulations, and I got chastised for going that particular way. I was guided that way. I didn't choose to do it. And I don't think it was fair to be put down in that situation. Um, another question was asked from uh, either James or Dave, and it was in relationship to the designs and the qualifications of what the state had for issues to see if it would all fit in that facility. Um, it's not my first building that I'm doing. It's not the architect's first building that he has designed. So do we have challenges in front of us? Absolutely. Could we resolve all those issues? Yeah, everything would fit. Everything would flow. It would all be per code. Nothing would have been an issue. You cut me short to prove it. I was looking for the right to continue that momentum for something that I asked for in the beginning. I came to this committee and I sat down here and I asked, if I can get through things and keep things moving along, would I get the support of this committee? Nobody argued me, nobody said, sure, go ahead, start with the historical society. I did. I didn't finish with them, but you cut me short. This project, I put $25,000 into a $1.4 million investment on the corner of Main Street. It's not gonna be an ugly looking facility. It isn't. The purchase of the building was $550,000. The renovations are over $900,000. Do you really think that something of that value is gonna come out ugly and not be beneficial to this community? I don't understand it. Nobody asked me any of those questions. Everybody asked, how much are you gonna charge? $150 a day per person. I'd like this committee to go back and find out when time comes and you need facility care, how much are you gonna be paying a day? Because 150 a day is cheap versus what's actually out there. You should all look, because you know, at some point in time, something's gonna happen to either yourself 
or your spouse. And I say this because I lost my wife and my current wife lost her husband. We know, we understand, we were, we're gonna end up at one point in time. And it's gonna be difficult for the elderly to be where they are when they have nobody to turn to. So when you asked, 38 years old, I told you point blank, 55 or minimum, I don't go against what I say. I stick with it. In reference to the Masonic here, the building is a piece of junk. Too big, too large, too institutional. Nobody wants to live in an institution. They want to live in a home. They want to live in a comfort environment. George, you may love the Masonic here. That may be a place for you, but it's not for everybody. It isn't. 350 square feet? 350 square feet? That Masonic home, I mean the Masonic home in here in Wethersfield, you were referring to the one in uh, Jordan Lane, right? Is that, the, I made a mistake. The one on Jordan Lane is 100,000 square feet. You want to live in something like that? I, I didn't don't. say that. And you led to me to believe you did. 350 is pretty small. It's a room out of a home. How big is your bedroom? How big is your bedroom? It's, your bedroom is about the same size, isn't it? Probably. No. You live in it. <clears throat> but you have the rest of the house to use. That's exactly Maybe what my I was house talking. is too big oh, for me. Okay. It could be. Okay. A lot of but, okay. you know, it, that's yeah. fine. So keep, yeah. keep going. So keep going. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was one of the, and I, I love this woman. She made all my points, but I couldn't say anything. You had a resident in town come up, lovely old lady, 80 years old. God bless her. That's what I want. She came up and said, I'm over the age of 80. I live in Old Weathersfield. I love what the community does for me. I love walking to the, to the markets. I can't drive, but I love to be where I am. Why can't we share that with everybody else? That's the exact person that we are targeting, the ones who can't drive, the ones who want to experience Old Weathersfield and live in the community. And you, you just, I don't know how else to explain that to you. But that's what I've always told you from the start of this whole thing, that that's what I was looking to do. And I just asked for the right to go do it. Now, everybody had questions, 38 years old. How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? I was told by staff that this meeting was not for that purpose. This meeting was to give me the opportunity to come back to this committee and put all those restrictions on. 55, 65, 70 years old, two dumpsters, one dumpster, garbage pail. All of that was to be dealt with at a later date. And I felt at that meeting, it was all dealt with right then and there. And I thought that was wrong because it came out that way. Dan kept staring right at me, 38, 38, 38. I thought the poor man was gonna have a heart attack. But the crowd was angry, the crowd was moving. You couldn't stop it. Who is to say, also say that the report that everybody keeps regenerating to, that was done 10, 15 years ago in the Historical Society, who's to say today it's not outdated? Who's to say that that report is done by one individual who is supposedly a professional, but the definition of a professional is a person who gets paid. So we paid for that report. Who knows it's actually right? Who actually verified it? Is it outdated? I don't know but it's over 10 years old and it hasn't done anything for that residence in that community overall. I haven't seen much change in that area in the last, since that report was generated to support that area. I grant it, it's a lovely community. I want to improve that community. I'm not looking to tear it apart, but the community needs a little bit of everything. The community needs residents. The community needs foot traffic. The community needs a business. The community needs a lot of everything that everybody brings with every single project. Who's to say that a home is not the fit for that particular spot at that time? Everybody says that you can't put the trash, you can't park the facility, you can't put anything here, you're too busy, no corner. What building or what facility is going to be suited for that? Because whenever anybody talks, parking is an issue, you can't do anything. Code is an issue, you can't do anything. So there's a handicap ramp that's gotta be involved for any commercial aspects. You've gotta put it in the back. All the residents are gonna complain. It's a tight site. It's not simple. 
we're looking to fulfill that become a leap, that that issue, and we didn't get that opportunity. You know, the other thing I found kind of kind of funny was. We're trying to do something for the elderly in this town to try to keep the elderly in this town for when they really need it because they can't afford to where they're going to stay. And as I sat there and I listened, I found it ironic that everybody that was fighting me was the elderly. And I found that the town supported the rejection of the elderly, almost to the point where I thought it was discriminating against the elderly, the elderly in the town against the elderly to move in is what it felt like. That's what the, the, the air in the room was. It wasn't, uh, let's help the elderly, let's, or let's do something for the community. It was, we need to stop this, and it's not right. Weird, it just, it, it just felt weird. Um, so, you know, the, the last part of this is I've seen this building for 20 years. I've lived here a long time. I'm, nothing I've ever seen wants to be done here. So I'm going to ask at some point in time, the residents of the area don't want anything to ever go there. So the building keeps changing hands from one to another. At what point in time is the town going to just offer Roger Tabshay $550,000 to buy the building? so that nothing can ever be done, and the town just buy the facility and then improve it, do whatever needs to be done, and turn it into something. Everybody says it's the pristine corner of Old Main Street. It's a dilapidated building. It's falling down. You got somebody that wants to do something and everybody fights them. What am I missing? Why isn't anything being done to accomplish that? I don't, I don't get it. When I said I was going to do something, I do it. I don't need a piece of paper. I need a handshake. I do. My father taught me that. He goes, your word is your bond. I was asking for that opportunity to continue. I didn't get it. I was disappointed. I wish I could go back and redo it, but I can't. Everything that I've done for this development of this particular parcel was by the requirements of the staff. I know all the fights in front of me. I was asking for the opportunity to continue because the biggest thing that the Historical Society wanted to know with the prejudice is can we get rid of the handicap ramp and can we, reduce the, can we reduce the overall massing of the building? You know what? After that meeting and I was denied, I had a meeting with the building official, the assistant building official, and the old building official, all three of them upstairs. We designed a solution to eliminate the handicap ramp, and then I was actually able to reduce the size of the mass. I believed if I passed that, that menu just to have the opportunity to come back to you later, I would have passed the Historical Society because I've given them everything they asked me for. So why was I told to go this way instead of wait or do something different? That's a question I would really like to know. Because everybody asks, asks that question. Would you like me to ask, answer that question? <clears throat> if, if, you if you didn't get to. past that step, there is no further steps. The regulations don't allow what you wanted to do. You were advised to go through that process. You couldn't go forward without going through that process. Right now, the regulations don't allow what you want to do there. And still don't, obviously, because the commission denied it. So, right. Has the appeal period run on this? The appeal period, I believe, has run on this, yeah. No appeal has been taken. No appeal has been okay, taken. I just want to make sure that we're, we're not within an appeal period, that this is still on the record or something. So, so the process you went through was the proper process. There was no other process that you could go through in so order to do what you wanted to do. How come the committee didn't understand that? I can't speak for the members of the commission. Several of the commission members made every effort to keep the conversation specific to the regulation amendment. However, people were getting off track. It was mostly from the public, not from this commission. So... Um, there was a conversation during the hearing to keep it on the fact that this is to change the regulations, not to talk about the specifics of the handicap ramp or trash, but yeah. you can't control the public's conversation on that, so. No, but I don't, I don't Peter, I don't believe that the, the commission, according to other towns that I've done this with, 
the agenda wasn't the same. They read letters that were irrelevant to what we were trying to do. They were submitted as part of the application. Whether they were irrelevant is up to the commission to determine yeah. that. So I can't, I can't speak to the commission, but I do recall specifically at the beginning of the hearing talking about speaking to the regulation amendment only because that's the only thing on the agenda. Yeah. Whether they did or didn't is another matter. Um, you know, Tom, you weren't there, so Rich, I'll let you maybe jump in here and, and, and talk about that, but that was the purpose of the hearing. Once again, uh, just like tonight, people make comments that are kind of off base and not related to the application at hand. It's almost uh, impossible to control what people say um, and keep them on track. It's the nature of a public hearing, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we can look at the minutes, but I think if I've said it once, I said it six times. That right. What we're here is to talk about the, you know, the regulations, and I think there was a fair amount of discussion during the deliberations, particularly, you know, about the village district as a whole and the impact of the regulations. Um, you know, you're correct. That wasn't what many of the people in the public talked about. That might not even have been what some of the members of the commission were asking you about. But I'm, I mean, I, I, I did my best to make sure that it was clear, or at least it was expressed clearly what the application was and what we were discussing, deliberating on, and voting on. And I felt that I did as good a job as I could Richard, of making sure that everybody got a fair shake, that you know nobody was being thrown under the bus or being abused by you know, members of the public. I, you know, Richard, I never I said you didn't. I, I never said you didn't, yeah. and I and I applaud you for the comments that you made in the beginning and the way that you excused and explained how people were trying to reach out to you and not disrupt your opinion of what was going on. I don't believe that happened with everybody on the committee. I think some of the residents got to those people on the committee, and I just I don't feel that they came in with an open mind more than they did with anything that this is not going to be a good idea. I came in previous to this whole thing and I asked if I can go through this process would I have some support? And when I came back, there was no support. So why tell me to continue or start something and knowing that it's not gonna go anywhere? Let me, let me just say this. When you first came in, you came in with, with, with an application which required a special permit, not a zone change. Yep. You came in with, to me, with something different. You came in nope. with a zone change. I, uh, let me just finish. Yes, sir. When, when you came in and I was talking, I was thinking of something which was a special use permit that was with the informal hearing. The application before us had to be a zone change. I personally take a zone change very seriously, and I take it much more seriously than I do you know, other things. And uh, I, that's just the way I yeah. want my take on it. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not right, but I came in with a specific design and concept that I wanted to present, I didn't deviate from that one bit. I, I didn't. I asked and I went, did everything by the direction of the staff. Uh, I'm not sure I can, in public, I'm just not sure I can get into it. We made it, we made a decision. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, was, I guess I was gonna get there eventually. It's kind of like, you know, we, is, is this like done, done? I, I don't know. Without, I heard without prejudice. But it was a zone change, right? So they uh, we, you didn't de you didn't deny it without prejudice. The historic district commission denied his application without prejudice, which would allows him to come back. But the whole issue with the historic district commission is, is relevant to you guys. I mean, that's that has nothing to do. This commission simply just de denied it. De uh, okay, right. so I was confusing those. Here, could he have come in <clears throat> with an application? For this use that he wanted? No, yeah. that's what I said at the yeah, beginning. We don't, we he had to have we, the regulations have to be amended. There, correct. To come in with an application. Yeah, there's no other. There's no other option. Do both the same night. Mm. Uh, well, I wouldn't have had him do both because he got denied, and he would have spent a fortune, you know, designing all of his plans. I wouldn't if advise it, him oh, to do yeah, that. Oh, have to do a lot of detailed planning. Right. No, I, but then first. there wouldn't have been a bunch of questions about that stuff or criticism. Well, that's a, that's a choice you make, uh, right? yeah. or, or that's a strategy we. We suggest. I guess it takes a lot of money to get you to the end in order to have all the details. I, I don't know legally if you can even apply for a special permit until the regulations are in place because <clears> you're <throat> applying for something that isn't in the regulations. So 
I mean, I think that's a whole separate conversation. The, we, we, haven't we done things that way in the past? No. No, we've done this. No, we've done special permits and site plans together. Special but not zone changes. Zone, zone, zone changes, changes okay. and okay. special permits right. together. A lot different. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, of the zone effective zone dates and all that. Critical. So, you know, speaking for myself, there was no other advice or process that this applicant could pursue other than the process that he went through. Um, so there is no other, there was no other scenario. So the process was what the process was and you guys decided against the use. I mean, so that's really the bottom line. I think we've, we've worked on the, what was presented to the, to the commission. Uh, what was outside that we had nothing on the record that uh, can't, can't comment on. Uh, we, we made a decision based upon a well-run meeting, uh, based upon facts on the record. So and that was it, and you know, yeah. I just I wish I knew this before I spent the twenty-five thousand dollars. That no matter what happened, it was never going to go forward because it would have been great to know, or the committee should have known that what the steps were going to be versus me coming back. I felt like I surprised everybody, and that that shouldn't have been that. It, it should not have gone that way. So I did what I was told, and. I got chastised for it, and it was wrong. That's all I really wanted to say. Thank you. Right. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, did you want to? Uh, are you are you here just to? Or do you want to participate, or do you have? Okay. <laughs> it's not every day somebody's in our audience at this point of the evening. Um. It's it's open mic night. understanding was that um, a lot of time and effort went into developing the village business district a lot I can remember that but I wasn't really involved in it I was very involved in the Comstock Ferry project I saw this as being uh, as kind of going against what so many people set out to do and that was to kind of foster a really vibrant um, retail area of Main Street where you could make money and and satisfy people's needs and all that so when this application came in I was looking for how that fit with that village business description and I think that's probably the the part that we here some people were confused about was first of all is this for Weathersfield people you mentioned that it's gonna give people opportunities well is it only for Weathersfield people that you would be taking in there Okay, but they could all come from out of town. Okay, so um, my hope for that corner, and I know that there still are other people that are interested in that corner, is that it be at the very least mixed use. Um, perhaps retail on the first floor, one or two types of businesses, and maybe um, apartments or some type of uh, uh, living quarters upstairs. Um, I think it's possible. I, I think that what you presented was a very nice plan, but it's like if I were gonna build a big house, I think I would wanna put it on some land. And I don't wanna have it all wedged in there at the corner because you want your building to shine and you want your people that live there to be able to benefit from the surroundings. Not from sitting at Village, not from going to the ice cream parlor, those are all nice things. But I'm talking about have some land around you. And I'm very involved still with the Belden House, which is right next door to you. So when you talk about things like having um, trash cans and the like, we're talking about diesel generators, compressors. That's a, that building next door to you is a very uh, well-known historic building. And, and we personally, and I'm able to say this on behalf of Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds that owns it, we're concerned about what the but that side of your building is going to mean for that residence. Okay, so I'll turn this way. So 
so the, the point is, it's not you know, just one set of people. You have people that live right around there that are concerned because they're neighbors to that building. You have business owners that hear that um, the regulation is gonna change and that it's not gonna be village business anymore, but that it would be a residential use. And so they immediately say, well, how does that affect our business? So everybody has kind of their own take on what's gonna happen to the Masonic and how it's gonna affect them. And um, I thought that the meeting was a very good meeting. I thought the fact that a lot of people came out and expressed themselves, not everybody gets up to a microphone and can express themselves. So um, uh, the commission tries to manage that and, um, uh, and I thought it was handled very well. And I felt that it was over. You've been around a long time. <laughs> You've been into a lot of these I'm an old things. Lady. You've been around a long time like <laughs> I have. Yeah. I've been around longer than you are. Mm -hmm. But uh, the point is that um, what do you see happening there? And of course, the historic commission will probably not allow the building to be torn down, uh, <clears throat> for example. Uh, what do you see going in there? And or, you know, you met, mentioned it a little bit just now, mm -hmm. about what you thought, which is similar in some ways, the retail may be on the bottom of what we've seen in a yeah. couple of proposals well, we've approved at this commission. Yeah, I, I think um, what- You think the building can continue? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, Physically. yeah. And there are people interested in it, continuing to be interested in it. They for, are. In, in other ways. Oh, but also to contain so. it within that footprint so that, that uh, you might have maybe um, a, a little parking area or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. to facilitate it. Largely a lot of um, parking on the street. Um, and there is parking up and down Main Street. But um, different kinds of businesses. I mean, it could be that first floor could be divided up in ways so that you have more than one business in that space. And then upstairs you could have maybe a couple of apartments. Um, Tabachis were planning to have you know, apartments on two floors. So um, I still, I like what the Village Business District stands for. And I think if we're gonna keep Old Main Street, or if we're gonna keep Main Street alive, and we're gonna have people coming to it, we have to have something that we can offer them. And um, you, you know, when they come, they wanna go to the ice cream shop, or they wanna go into Air Market. Excuse me, did so, Mr. Tobacco so, go to you in a local level, the people down there, and talk about so, what he wants? Yeah. George, I, George I, well, let's... Okay. The, yeah. I yeah. can't yeah. do this. I thought no, these I, people came. He well, came you could do it at talk, and now he left. Well, I, I guess. Yeah. I guess it's just is a theory. Is he just venting himself? Is that what he did tonight? Or is it's he public public comment. Comment. It's a public comment. It's when all, I, when all, I, I, all I want to say is that I think, in the end, and uh, it's been it's been this way for some years, and it's changed hands a few times. Mm -hmm. I think the tab sheets had a very. Uh, they were um, serious about what they wanted to do, and I think then they had to have a change of plans. So um, there are people out there. It has to be marketed differently. Perhaps it has to be put in the hands of a, a real estate firm to do that. But um, it's gotten a lot more attention than it's ever gotten, and um, and I think that in time it will um, it will happen. And I'm looking forward to it from the Belden side because as soon as you finish that corner, that changes. It, that adds to everybody, you know, if it's done well. So, um, uh, you know, people people want something to happen with it. And they know that it's, it's a nice building and it's not falling down. It's been gutted somewhat, but it's brick, you know. So, um, so that's all I have to say. Thank you. And I was out there kind of looking, wanting to say something. <laughs> okay. All righty, uh, other business. Do we have any other business? No. Nothing. Uh, do, do we want to discuss any of the correspondence that came into us? Yes. Minutes. Motion was, approved. Thank you. I know I wasn't there, so I'm not voting. Uh, we should have plenty of people here to, uh, to approve it. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, George. One, you two. Know, I, as long as the uh, last couple pages are added. Three, yeah. four, five. Actually, there are only five people here that were present, all right? So if you were present, if you're in favor of, favor of the minutes, say aye. 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 And anybody opposed? All right, so assuming it was all five, then it passes. Erin, 
Anything of particular note with the correspondence? No big deal. Motion to close. We're, we're done, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> a second? Yeah, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Everyone opposed? All right.